Hi guys, Kerry here and welcome back to our video tutorial series on how to use Adobe SpeedGrade. Now as you saw previously uh, and as I introduced, this is the old interface of Adobe SpeedGrade. In June of 2013, Adobe is going to release a new version with an enhanced user interface. So this is for people who still have the old version. Now in the first video I showed you how to export using the sends to Adobe SpeedGrade command to take a series of clips on the timeline and take it over to SpeedGrade and give it some basic color correction. And in the second video we showed you how you can export back to Adobe Premiere by using the render function in SpeedGrade and using the import for DPX files within Adobe Premiere Pro. But we had a problem. You'll remember that the second clip here, which is a boat on the water, when it exported out of Premiere over to SpeedGrade it appeared with a whole lot of weird yellow uh, splotches all over it, which I don't know myself the technical reason behind that. I think it has something to do with the uh, the image depth and the range of colors in the image. But there is a way that you can export from Premiere Pro over to SpeedGrade without having that happen. And the way to do it is this. You can see on the work area here, we've selected the clip that we want. And now we're going to export it. So we're going to go File, going to go Export, and Export Media. As expected our export window comes up and you can see at the bottom here the source range is work area because we only want to deal with that one clip that we've selected. In the format here we're going to pick DPX which as you know is the exchange format we use to get uh, video from one program to another when we're doing color correction. And you've got a bunch of settings here. We're going to make sure it matches the clip that we've been using. We've got 25 frames as the frame rate and the uh, resolution is 1080p. Everything looks pretty good. So we're going to click export. Actually, no, before we do that, we should make sure that we give it a name that we can deal with and a file path. So click on the output name and the dialog box will come up for where you want to save it. Uh, we're going to call it, uh, we'll move it down into this folder here and we'll call it Boat Shop. Click Save and then click Export. Adobe Premiere is now going to export just that clip that we've selected with the work area bar. Okay, that clip is rendered into the DPX image sequence. So I've closed Adobe Premiere Pro and I've opened Adobe SpeedGrade just to give myself a bit more processing power on the computer rather than having two very intensive applications running at once. Thankfully it's opened up the last project that we worked on where you can see we've got clip one and then if we scrub the viewer over here you can see we've got our third clip. Now it's time to load the second clip, the one that had issues the first time around. And of course once again it's very important to remind you that uh, SpeedGrade will open up the last workspace that you used but if you used another project in between times you won't be able to open up your original project unless you saved the IRCP file. So remember to keep saving using the save IRCP button down the bottom there. And you can open up your IRCP project if you accidentally lost it when you closed it and open up another project in SpeedGrade, if that makes sense. Okay, we're going to load the clip now that we just rendered. So up the top here, alongside monitor, you've got uh, windows that represent different bins that you can work with. Uh, we're going to click on SpeedGrade Tutorial because I've already navigated there. And you can see that on the hard drive, the folder SpeedGrade Tutorial has the clip Boat Shot, which we just rendered. And already in the thumbnail, you can see it looks a little bit better than it did in the first video. So we're going to click and drag it, and we're going to hover it over the timelines here. Now there's a few things we can do. We can release it right here, and you'll see there's a little red line. But sometimes you can run the risk of overlapping clips that are further down the timeline and you don't want to do that because it might be hard to get it back to the original state. So drag it upwards slightly so that it creates a new wide red line like this and then release the mouse. What it's doing then is creating a brand new video track for your clip and now we can move it into place where we want. So grab the clip and just grab it in the middle here and drag it along. Oh, but you can see what's happening here because we've grabbed it in the middle it's actually dragging the whole thing, which is not good because that's going to put other clips out of sync. So up at the top left here, we're going to click undo to restore that back to the correct alignment. And now in the process of undo, you can see that it's opened up the thumbnail view at the bottom, which some users might like. Uh, SpeedGrade has a habit of randomly switching this thumbnail view off and on. You can see the button to the left here, the little um, film strip. You can click that to enable it or disable it. 
Okay, we're going to move this clip now, and the best way to do it is to grab the uh, little moving tool and drag it along to the left, and then release it. Now it's almost there. We need to go in one more frame, and you can see that's pretty good position based on its relevance to the other two clips. Now because it's in the place that we want, we might as well move it down into the original video track. So grab it and drop it down into your video one and it'll release there. And now we can create a new grading clip. So click your grading tool down the bottom, drag it up here into the grading layer and release it. And you can see it makes a grade for the length of the clip. Now we're going to need to go back to monitor, so click monitor up at the top left. And here goes our boat, and you can see, thankfully, there's no more yellow splotches. So uh, just to quick give you a quick summary, uh, when you went uh, send to Adobe Speedgrade, it rendered it in the uh, image depth that it thought was going to be best for the project. But sometimes, as you saw, that's going to create little artifacts in the picture. So if you pick to manually render out a DPX file, where you actually get a selection of rendering options in terms of whether you want it to be full range or limited range, that might remove the artifacts from your picture. So now we can click this grading clip here, let's go to look and let's warm it on up so that the cold winter's day that the boat was sailing with the cloudy sky is now going to look a bit more like a summer's day. So we'll drag our gamma tool in the middle here all the way over to yellow And you can see the clip warming up even though it looks a bit unusual but hey this is just for a tutorial example and so now to get that back out to premiere pro just like we did in the previous video you're going to go up to output and you'll be able to render the whole image sequence which is now going to be in sync with everything else Okay, I've opened back up Adobe Premiere Pro and I've closed Speedgrade, but admittedly I actually had to re-render from Speedgrade one more time because I realized that I forgot to set it as a DPX image sequence for the export. Instead I had a QuickTime movie, which is not what I want. So I went back and rendered it as DPX. So there's a lesson there that you should always check your render settings before you click render. So here we are back in our project. I'm going to double click here to get back to the import window and I've called my new render tutorial 2. So I'm going to scroll down and yes this is a very messy file structure. You wouldn't ordinarily want to lay it out like this. And here we go tutorial 2. So we'll find the first frame there and it's a DPX image sequence. So we'll check image sequence and click import. And it imports it here as the clip. And it's called a tutorial 20,000, which is just uh, what happens when you have the image sequence prefix on it. And as we scrub over it, you can see there goes the boat, the shot that we wanted to fix up. So we can go over to video 2 and we can select both those clips and we can delete them off the timeline by hitting the delete key on the keyboard. And now if we take tutorial 2 and we drag it over to video 2 and drop it in place at the start of the sequence, and so now each of our clips has color correction. We've got clip number one, clip number two, which had problems the very first time around, and clip number three. So there you go. That is how you can get clips out of Premiere Pro over to Speedgrade without using the Send to Speedgrade tool. Uh, it is important to show you something that I forgot to show you earlier when you were going export. And I'm just going to bring up the export media window again here. So we'll go File, Export, Media. Remember this is where we took our clip and exported it as a DPX image sequence. There's actually a lot of options for the quality of the clip that you're going to transfer over. So we're going to go uh, DPX. And here under presets you get all the options available. Now we went with the default which was full range and that worked for what we wanted. But you've got so many different uh, options here that if you can't quite get rid of uh, color artifacts from your images or sorry from your clips then trying some of these options might be the best way to do it but we've got our color corrected sequence so we're pretty happy with that and in the next video we're going to show you how to deal with color correction on transitions like dissolves